go ahead and subscribe hit that like button if you have made more unloaded trips to pick up a camper in the rv transport world than not Uh, you'll see it back there. It's the only bumper pull we have back there. Okay, cool. All right. So we are getting a repoed 34 foot bumper pull and taking it to Ohio. Somewhere back here. They said used already has scratches and this and that on it um, but yeah first actual backhaul off of the backhaul logo As you can see we made the drop i am in you can see that salt lake city utah uh why am i in a hotel we will dive into that in the next video uh and it'll be a good one but uh all things back home so when you go through orientation it kind of gets brushed off like if you're doing single pull you know hey there's a backhaul board, but you can choose your own. The house takes, you know, the company takes 15% so that you can use all their authority, you know, be running under them. So that's a very great um, setup in terms of a convenience fee for us. You, know, you shouldn't think, oh, take money all the time. Last time I che checked, uh, everybody's in it to make money right so you, you know you can't act like it's a bad thing that the company is going to profit from it too um but uh what you don't realize until you're out there is you know finding the back halls at least with the company i'm leased on with it, it's somewhat impossible um, from what I hear, it sounds like Horizon maybe has the most sophisticated backhaul setup. Um, but where you really get into always running loaded is the haul and tow, which is whether it be a semi or a, a truck that has, you know, like say on the truck, for example, you know, the back of it, it's a chassis setup and you can load up. It's like a trailer added on. So you can load up one unit right there and then you can tow a unit behind it. Uh, I've heard in different Facebook forums that that is the best way to go in terms of having uh, DOT inspections being a little more lenient than actually you know, having the 53 foot trailer semi set up or whatever. Again, I don't know. That's just what I've heard from uh, people that are in the multi-haul division. But then at least with IT, we, they central, they use central dispatch. So you'll have, you know, when you drop, you'll have the availability to get some type of car to haul back. You know, again, whether you're able to get two or three cars, depending on your setup, but that's when you know, you're doubling your income by doing the same exact amount of mileage. Uh, I don't know if you can do that non-CDL or if it just with the setup and then the, you know, two or three trailers, if you would just end up always being over 
uh, the 26,000 one. Uh, if you know, comment below because uh, back in a first video I did, maybe the first or second one, uh, not a second or third one, I talked about, uh, you know, there's an idea that I have come springtime and it's about trying to get into the multi hull division because again, if you're doing the same amount of traveling, but you increase your revenue. So, you know, you go from a buck 65, like heading out west right now, a buck 69 to over 250 a mile for the same route. And then you're going to get cars to haul back. So it's just kind of a no brainer. The only issue is the cost of entry for something like that is going to be steeper than just getting your feet wet in with single poles. One thing that I've been playing around with and, and really I haven't been taking it seriously, I I should, but is using different load boards, subscription-based load boards. So I have a subscription to the DAT load board because you can select power only. Um, so this is where backhauls on single pole division, it's, it's virtually non-existent. Um, it's not that it's not possible. Like I had talked with a guy in our inventory department um, and he's like, you know, people have tried in the past. Uh, they've just never had a ton of luck. Um, but he's like, I'm not going to tell you that, you know, hey, maybe you can't be the one that, you know, kind of cracks the code on how to make it work. Um, but essentially how that would work, though, is, you know, you go on, you know, this DAT load board, you find a power only. Uh, again, you're paying to use this. You call that dispatch, you get all the info, make sure that you are able to haul that. Then you have to play middleman. You have to reach out to a specific person at your company. And so it has to be in, you know, their hours of working there. And then they have to coordinate it because the biggest issue is the pay has to run through the company to come to you. They can't pay you and then you pay the company. It was his biggest thing was that they found issues with having anybody really be successful with uh, other load boards out there. But I, I think it's a hole to go down. You just have to invest in spending some money, you know, a monthly subscription on those and see if it plays out. You can cancel it at any time. Uh, with DAT there, I think there's three different levels of subscriptions. So I felt like, yeah, you know, hey, why not, you know, spend however much I'm spending. Uh, I'm at the, the $99 a month one um, for a month or two. And let you just, you get more info the more you pay, obviously it's, it's a marketing ploy to have multi-levels to get somebody to sign up. Um, but, uh, you get more info on this as far as you can see what the average run rates were, you know, for those lanes that you're potentially picking a load from, uh, because you, you'll negotiate with whatever dispatch that you're talking to from the load board. And so, you know, if it pans out again, it makes this endeavor that much more profitable. So um, that's all I got for you. Hey, if you have any tips, any things that you've tried and been successful with uh, on the backhaul side of things, or maybe you're somebody that's watching this that is in the multi-haul division. Um, again, I know myself, I am... Uh, extremely interested in that in more in a non CDL capacity. I don't, I just don't think I want to mess with that. You know, so if you have any info on how all of that works, the logistics, uh, you know, the things that you would have done differently, Hey, comment those below. Uh, and if you're just a single pole guy like myself, uh, you know, comment below a story of a backhaul experience, or maybe you're consistently getting backhauls, you know, let me know what you're doing if you don't care about sharing those secrets to help everybody, you know, make a little bit more money and be a little bit more profitable. But hey guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, stay tuned. You can see we are in 
Salt Lake City right now, and there is a great reason. Well, I, I don't know if I'd say great, but there's a reason that we're in here. So stay tuned to the next video. We'll dive into that. <laughs> 